The Premier League is the pinnacle of English football. Sitting at the summit of the football pyramid, housing some of the best players and best teams in the world. Gaining entry to the Premier League, either through winning the championship or making it through the lottery of the playoffs, is often seen as a golden ticket, with the playoff final considered the richest game in world football. Being in the Premier League guarantees a lot of money. This is a fun video, a fun little experiment I'm wanting to do, where I create my quote unquote ideal Premier League. I'm going to preface this by saying I know it's extremely unlikely that we'll ever see a Premier League exactly like what I'm going to lay out here, but I thought this was a neat video there. It was a fun little experiment. So let's get into it. So yeah, the teams that have remained in the top right. First off, we've got Arsenal. Now, they boast the record for the longest streak in the top flight, only having been relegated once, and that was back in 1913, and also remain the only side to go invincible during the Premier League era. Aston Villa, I've got a soft spot for the villains, and despite suffering many relegations in their history, as recently as 2018-19, I will always see them as a Premier League outfit. They're also a founding member of the Football League, and all round, just a solid club. Liverpool, the second most successful team in the top flight and the most successful English club in Europe. Liverpool are a stalwart of the top flight and my girlfriend wouldn't be happy if I relegated them. Manchester City, Man City are currently the dominant force in domestic and European football with City's dominance being quite recent in the grand scheme of things but since their promotion back to the Premier League in 0203 have retained their spot and have not looked at risk of going down. Then we want to Manchester United, they are the most successful club in the English top flight and while it is only by a solitary trophy, they had to retain their spot in this league. Despite not being in great form at the moment, they are still an iconic Premier League team. And honestly, I think they deserve to stay in the division, as much as I dislike them. And then we move on to Newcastle United. Newcastle have been up and down the Football League, but are largely considered a Premier League outfit, with them spending the majority of their existence in the top life of English football, whether that was the First Division or the Premier League. They've been up and around there. For a long long time honestly they're a good side with a great set of supporters no ill will towards newcastle i think they deserve to be in the premier league not a fan of that sports washing though i know we want to nottingham forest now yes i am heavily biased here but hey this is my ideal premier league at the end of the day forest were founding members of the premier league only returning to the premier league last season after a 23 year absence but looking to establish themselves once again forest have enjoyed a lengthy history in the top flight as well as being the last english side to win the european cup back to back and Sheffield United. Sheffield United were founding members of the Premier League as well as having the distinction of being the team that scored the first goal of the Premier League era. I think Sheffield United deserved to retain their spot in the top flight despite being relegated in the season just past. Tottenham Hotspur, another founding member of the Premier League that has not been relegated since the league's inception. Spurs deserve to retain their position as well. Last tasting relegation back in the 70s. Despite not winning much silverware in recent times, they remain safe of top flight fixtures and they did win an Audi Cup, so there's that. And then we want to West Ham United. The Irons have enjoyed mixed success in the past, but have often found themselves in the top flight, but never doing enough to lift a top flight title. West Ham have been enjoying a lot of success recently, even lifting European trophy in the process. And I just quite like the Hammers, to be honest. They've got a great set of supporters, great fan base. Steam's a bit shit, but you can't do much about that. And finally, the last surviving Premier League club. I've got Wolverhampton Wanderers. Wolves were founders of the Football League, and the West Midlands outfit have been up and down the Football League throughout their history. Personally, I heavily associate with the Premier League, despite not being the league itself for that long. No, I think they deserve to retain their spot in the top flight. So yeah, that is the teams that are staying in my ideal Premier League. Nine clubs have seen themselves maintaining their spot in the top flight. You know, I had to humble the likes of Everton and Chelsea, but, uh, you know, they could have easily stayed in this league if I liked their clubs. <laughs> Anyway, on to those that I've just promoted. So the first newly promoted side is Birmingham City. Yeah, so we start off with the Blues. They were relegated from the Premier League in 2010-11 and have yet to return. And that doesn't like it'll happen anytime soon after they decided that Wayne Rooney was the best man for the job. I will never understand that. Birmingham City are fierce rivals to Aston Villa and a top flight second city derby would just be crazy to see. I can only imagine the atmosphere. And then we want to Burton Albion. Yes, <laughs> Burton. <laughs> this is probably my ruggish shout of the lot, and I would agree, it is crazy. But Burton are just one of 34 EFL teams that have never played in the top flight of English football. Now, reality is, I just have a soft spot for Burton. They've let Forest play their last two pre-seasons at the Pirelli. 
I hope I know it'll live to them up the doggy daycare reds. And then we move on to Derby County. As a Forest fan, it may seem odd for me to want to see our arch rivals in the Premier League, but only alongside us. A top flight East Midlands Derby would be insane. We kind of took the Derby for, for granted, I want to say, because since being promoted back to the Premier League, we've not had a proper East Midlands Derby, and it's just not felt the same. Like, I want to feel that Derby Day atmosphere. It's electric, honestly. It's so good. And I want to feel that in the top flight. That's the only reason they're here. <laughs> the atmosphere was electric in the Championship, so I can only imagine how much bigger it would be in the Premier League. And then we want to Millwall. <laughs> Millwall have never played in the Premier League since its creation in 1992, and historically, they've rarely been seen in the top flight either, often flirting with the Championship and League One. But I just think a Dockers derby in the top flight would be an insane thing to witness. West Ham and Millwall are often classed as the two most violent sets of English supporters. And a Dockers derby between these two in the Premier League would cause havoc in the capital. And I'm all here for it. And then we move on to Portsmouth. Now this is another biased one as my friend does support Portsmouth. But they have experienced a very varied history being one of five English teams who have been champions of all four tiers of professional English football. Portsmouth have enjoyed Premier League football but have since dropped all the way down to League One. And they have since been promoted to the Championship to begin their quest back to the top flight. The Blues are a very storied English club and seeing them in the top flight again would be class. And then we want to Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday have not been having a good time with things recently, but I would like to see them back in the Premier League alongside their Steel City rivals. The Owls are founding members of the Premier League and have historically competed in the top flight. However, in recent history, have not seen a return to the Premier League since getting relegated in 2000. And try as they might, they've just not managed to get promoted yet. And this doesn't look like the season for them either. And then Southampton. The Saints were founding members of the Premier League and have enjoyed a position in the top flight for a large majority of their history. They joined their South Coast rivals Pompey in the Premier League again, and it's another derby that I just think would be class from two top flight outfits. Historically, this one can get a bit crazy, and I think if two teams are promoting in the top of English football, it makes for a tasty derby. And then we move on to Sunderland. The Wearside outfit have not been enjoying a great time of things recently after getting relegated from the Premier League in 2016-17, but historically, Sunderland have been a top flight club. We saw the atmosphere in the recent wear time derby in the cup, and I think in the top flight, that would be even more insane. I'd like a wear time derby, a time wear derby in the Premier League once again. And finally, West Bromwich Albion. The Baggies were founding members of the Football League and have enjoyed very success throughout their history. Whilst they've not enjoyed much success as of late, they have enjoyed lengthy spells in the top flight. A Black Country Derby is considered one of the most intense rivalries in the UK, so that in the top flight would be class. I mean, we saw it in the FA Cup just gone, but it lived up to expectations. So I think that in the Premier League would be insane. So yeah, those are my picks for my own personal ideal Premier League. There are some honourable mentions such as Leeds United, Middlesbrough, Blackburn Rovers, Bolton Wanderers and AFC Wimbledon, but ultimately they just didn't make the cut. Apologies lads, I thought these clubs would be much better additions than yours. No hard feelings though. So my main focus was on those big derbies and this Premier League has quite a few. Now it doesn't have all the biggest derbies in English football, um, maybe a bit of an oversight from me, but I wanted to keep some more of the more established Premier League clubs in there, while I was adding some, some new, new blood like Burton Albion. So yeah, the big derbies we will see in this Premier League campaign are the Manchester Derby between United and City, the North London Derby between Arsenal and Spurs, the East Midlands Derby between Forest and Derby, the Steel City Derby between Wednesday and Sheffield United, the Second City Derby of Aston Villa and Birmingham City, the Tyneware Derby of Newcastle and Sunderland, the Black Country Derby of West Brom vs Wolves, the South Coast Derby of Pompey vs Southampton, and finally the Dockers Derby of West Ham vs Millwall. Now these are some of the most intense derbies we've seen in English football. Maybe not so much the first one, but the other ones are quite fierce. And I think put, put that all together in the top flight of English football makes some very tasty clashes. You've got like rivals between like Wolves and Aston Villa and like West Brom and Birmingham City, you know, things like that that aren't exactly derby derbies, but there's still some rivalry there. So they add a little bit of spice to the mix as well. Instead of just talking about this Premier League, I wanted to see how it could look. So with the help of EAFC 24 and my 10 hour free trial, I wanted to see how this league might play out. Now, looking at the current squads of these teams, uh, they'd be getting bad in the top flight. Let's be real. A League One side is not going to stand up to the likes of Bournemouth, Burnley, Sheffield United, perhaps. If, if we just put these teams into the league in their current state, Portsmouth, Burton and Derby are all looking like nailed on relegation candidates. I wanted to give them a fighting chance. I wanted to give all new promoted sides a fighting chance. I took all the players from the clubs I'd forcefully relegated and randomly distributed them throughout these new Premier League sides with the help of this spin wheel. 
Now admittedly a lot of these players are from teams in the lower half of the Premier League, but it's much better than what the teams currently have, and the players from the likes of Chelsea and Brighton can really boost a team in important areas. And to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised with what happened. The spin wheel blessed each team with fairly balanced squads. Every team managed to get their hands on at least one top flight keeper, so that's a good start. So yeah, let's take a look at each team's marquee signings for their Premier League campaigns. FFP be damned, because these didn't cost a penny. So yes, the big transfers, we're going to start off with Birmingham City, and they got Cole Palmer, Brian Mbwemo, and Conor Gallagher. Those are the three big signings they received. Pretty solid, can't lie. Burton Albion were blessed with the likes of Ansu Fati, Kukurea, and Moises Caicedo, so a bit of a Brighton theme going on there. Derby County received Estupinian, Raul Jimenez, and Michael Alise. Millwall were gifted Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Deli Ali, and Mikhailo Mutrik. Portsmouth received the likes of Raheem Sterling, Ben Chilwell, and Alex Awobi. Sheffield Wednesday were given the likes of Evan Ferguson, Karen Matoma, Jao Pedro, and Armando Broya. So a little bit of a Brighton tinge for them as well. Southampton were given the likes of William, Billy Gilmore, Justin Clivert. Sunderland received the likes of Beto, Enzo Fernandez, Christopher Nkunku, Dominic Slanky, and Reese James. Very solid from them. And West Bromwich Albion received the likes of Nicholas Jackson, Ebrichi Eze, and Jared Branthwaite. The spin wheel must have been a Wednesday eye, as it looked like Sheffield Wednesday had been blessed with one of the best squads I'd seen. But Sunderland were also a closed second in my opinion. Just looking at the players they've been given. Both teams blessed with a lot of quality. All in all though, these are all quality Premier League sides and should have no issues keeping things competitive. So let's see how things go. Now for the purpose of this experiment, I took control of Manchester City. This is so I could keep an eye on the week to week fixtures and the Premier League itself and not really have to worry about running the club itself and just trying not to get fired really. I think it's impossible to get fired with City. I almost did. But that's besides the point. So this is how the things line up at the start of the season. Three of our newly printed sides have really benefited from the alphabet, but this is already looking like a quality Premier League season. I can't wait to get started. Their squad does not look too shabby at all. This is a solid mid-table side, but let's see how they do it against the reigning champions, Manchester City. Yeah. <laughs> As expected, Sheffield Wednesday could not see off Manchester City at Hillsborough, but they did go ahead through Danjuma, but ultimately could not hold things together as Holland grabbed a brace. Even in FIFA, he's still a robot. So after one game played, this is how things look. West Brom found themselves top as they demolished Sheffield United, with Sunderland and Southampton sitting in 5th and 6th respectively, after the wins against Derby and Liverpool. Millwall just squeaked into the top half as they drew with Birmingham City, who found themselves in 11th. Derby and Wednesday sit just above Liverpool in 14th and 15th, and Pompey find themselves just above the relegation zone in 17th place after losing to West Ham. However, Burton were the most unlucky though as they now find themselves in the relegation zone after losing to Spurs. But they're doing better than Sheffield United, so there's that. Okay, we return at the halfway point of the season and this is how things stand. Unfortunately, most of the newly promoted teams have fallen away from the top six, with only Sunderland still hovering around the top as they sit in seventh. Pompey are the only other team to occupy the top half as they find themselves in ninth, sandwiched between Liverpool and Manchester United. So not terrible company. Burton have done well to pull themselves out of the relegation zone as they sit in 11th, with neighbours Derby in 12th. Southampton and Millwall are also up and around there in 13th and 14th, which is not a bad showing so far. Ah. Never mind. Birmingham City sit three points clear of the relegation zone, whilst West Brom and Sheffield Wednesday find themselves in the drop. Wednesday are doing better than their Steel City rivals though, as the Blades are still rooted to the bottom of the league, so some things never change. But West Brom's drop off has been insane, but I guess after one game, you can't really call it, so um, we'll, we'll say that's okay. <laughs> so, this is how the league finishes. Newcastle United with their first top flight title since 1927, but that's not why we're here. It's really not looking great for our new promoted sides. Portsmouth being the best performing of the lot in the season in 8th, with 14 wins to their name. It's not too shabby if you ask me. Millwall and Sunderland are the only other two sides that make up the top half. Um, I guess 3 out of 9 isn't terrible going, but it's, it's better than I expected to be honest. Burton, Southampton and Derby weren't far off as they make up 12th, 13th and 14th. To be honest, anywhere above the relegation zone is a bonus. And speaking about escaping the relegation zone, West Brom! They managed to escape the clutches of the relegation zone as they finish in 16th place, 5 points clear. So, a, a solid showing in the end. But, two of our sides let us down. Sheffield Wednesday and Birmingham City both found themselves relegated. Both teams had a 3 point gap between them and safety, but it was just not to be. I apologise Wednesdayites and Blue Noses, but just wasn't to be. Wednesday is especially shocking though, as on paper they had the best team of the lot, and a lot of quality throughout, so I'm really not sure how they've managed to get relegated. Oh, 
Sheffield United have also been relegated, so the Steel City is washed, but I guess some things never change. Overall, this was a really fun experiment to do and made for a very exciting Premier League. I mean, if this was real, the scenes would be insane, Twitter would be going crazy, and that's what I'm here for. Let's take a look at some of the stats though, namely those top scorers and those all-important Derby Day results. I'm going to go through the top scorers of the new promoted sides, starting off with Birmingham City, who had Brian and Buemo with 11 goals. Not too bad. Then, Burton Albion with Benson Manuel, also scoring 11 goals. Derby County's top scorer was Zeki Mduni with 6. Millwall had two top scorers with Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Delhi Ali both hitting 7. Portsmouth had Kiefer Moore with 15 goals. Sh excuse me. <laughs> Sheffield Wednesday had Arnott Downjuma with 9. Southampton had Harry Wilson with 8. Sunderland had Better with 13. And West Brom had Nicholas Jackson with 12. So that's not too shabby numbers to be honest. For a team newly promoted with a bunch of random players all put together, there's some fairly good numbers. I mean, Kiefer Moore scoring 15 for Portsmouth is very surprising. He was the top scorer out of the lot here, so fair play. I think what we're all here for is the Derby Day results. So, for the Manchester Derby, it was one draw and one win for United. North London Derby, one draw and one win for Arsenal. For East Midlands Derby, it was two wins for Derby. In the Steel City Derby, Sheffield United won both of their clashes. In the Second City Derby, it was Aston Villa who won both. In the Tyneware Derby, it was Newcastle who won both. In the Black Country Derby, West Brom won one and Wolves won one as well. In the South Coast Derby, it was a draw and a win for Portsmouth. And finally, the Dockers Derby was two wins for West Ham. So yeah, looks like most of our new departed sides didn't fare too well in their derbies. Apart from Derby, you can't write it. But yeah, all in all, this is a very fun experiment. I had a lot of fun coming up with this Premier League, creating this Premier League and seeing what players would end up playing for each side. I was actually inspired by a few Twitter posts I'd seen you know, in the past couple of months where people were creating their ideal Premier League, so I wanted to give it a go and then see how they would play out in FIFA. And I'm quite happy with the results. Very fun. Forest didn't get relegated, which is also a bonus. Um, yeah, very fun experiment all in all. It's the first time I've done a video for like this on this channel, but I have a quite a few video ideas for similar videos in FIFA, so if you'd like to see any of those, Please let me know, you know, moving teams into the Premier League, stuff like that. That's all I'll say. But yeah, I've been O2GT. Hope you have a brilliant rest of your day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.